This college basketball game in Lexington today, a top 10 matchup as number five South Carolina comes to town. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And it was 24 hours ago that South Carolina confirmed they had a false positive and we got cleared to play this basketball game. And kudos to Coach Don Staley, who said, it doesn't matter that I only have one day of practice. It was at 5 o'clock yesterday they found out that this game was going to be played after having a three-day pause. The Gamecocks got on a flight this morning, came to Lexington, and they're ready to play. And they're hoping that Zaya Cook is ready to play because she's been fantastic recently. Zaya Cook's been ready to play ever since that NC State loss. She talked to Don Staley about being more effective and efficient, and she has been able to score in space and create space. And she's been very disciplined about the shots that she has taken. And you look, she is leading this South Carolina basketball team in scoring. Well, the South Carolina defense is going to have its hands full because Ryan Howard, the ESPNW National Player of the Week, she can play all five positions. If you're a first-year head coach, you have a lot of confidence when you know you've got an All-American in Ryan Howard on your team. And when your team is in trouble, you've got a player that says, Coach, give me the ball, and she can be effective at every position on the court, one through five. This is a tough player. She's hard to stop. The Wildcats depend a lot on Ryan Howard. These are her numbers for the season. They only go up in SEC play. Ryan Howard can turn it on at any moment and take over a basketball game. It's already helped Kentucky multiple times this season. Lots of questions about South Carolina now. Remember, they have only practiced once in the last three days, and that was late last night. How do they respond getting ready for this team? And Don Staley said they had one day of a virtual prep that they did while they were in quarantine. They sent him the video and the scout. So this is more about mental preparation for the Gamecocks than anything. Kentucky mentally has got to be ready to go because they are playing another ranked opponent. They have played four top 15 teams in the past 11 days. They know what it feels like. They know what that competition is like. They got to turn it on right now. Kentucky starting out in a man-to-man -man defense, really trying to keep the ball out of the paint from the Gamecocks. South Carolina loves to get the ball inside. Why wouldn't you to Aaliyah Boston and also Victoria Saxton? Boston will take a shot from the free throw line. Reveals put back is rejected. Chastity Patterson looking to go coast to coast. It's hard to go inside on Boston. Too much size, 6-5 inside with Aaliyah Boston. You also have Victoria Saxon inside for South Carolina as well. You'll notice a change in the starting lineup for Kentucky. Olivia Owens will get the start tonight. Drayana Edwards available, but she's going to come off the bench. Kyra Elsey feels like she's pressing a little bit right now, trying to get her back in a rhythm. Eight seconds on the shot clock for Howard. Kiki McKinney's put back won't go. Second chance for Kentucky, Blair Green. That's a missed opportunity for Kentucky. Two offensive rebounds. Those are going to come few and far between when you're rebounding with South Carolina. South Carolina, one of the best rebounding teams in the nation, third in the nation in rebounds per game. Four seconds, though, on the shot clock. Zaya Cook's got to do something. Throws up the long ball and misses everything. Dawn Staley could not have been more excited when we caught her on Zoom last night, about 30 minutes after they found out they were going to play this basketball game. She was pumped. And it's all about, as a head coach, how you handle this COVID situation when you have to take a pause. And she was excited about it. And you know that how she handles it is going to be how her team handles it. And so if Don Staley's excited, the rest of her team looks looking forward to playing. Aaliyah Boston bringing it up the court. Victoria Saxton, finally, we've got some points. Let me point this out to you. Aaliyah Boston, 
She's getting a rebound in that possession. She's bringing it down the court. She got an assist in that position in transition. And we've already seen her this year as Ryan Howard gets the bucket in the foul. We've already seen that outside game too, so you can add that to the list. She hit three threes against Florida. If there's a player that's going to answer, coming back right at you, it's going to be Ryan Howard. You have got to get in her space. You've got to close her space down before she gets into her shot. And that's the first foul on Aaliyah Boston. Ryan Howard will get the three-point play. <laughs> Olivia Owens rejects Henderson. You talked about the change in the starting lineup for Kentucky with Olivia Owens. Well, she brings size for the Wildcats. And to do that right there, to try to stop paint points from the Gamecocks. It's hard to do. There's Aaliyah Boston with some paint points. South Carolina averages 43.3 points in the paint. That is 52% of their total points. How about this? In Alabama, against Alabama, they had 23 field goals in the paint. 14 of those in the paint came from guards. It's not just the post players. And speaking of guards, Zaya Cook driving. Come down, it comes down to the hands of Kiki McKinney. And so now Ryan Howard will run the point. Remember, we told you she can play one through five. Chastity Patterson at the SEC logo. Short. Well, for Kentucky, we told you it's been a wild 11 days for first-year head coach Kyra Elsey. On December 31st, they opened up SEC play with Arkansas. They beat the Razorbacks. Then they were supposed to play Tennessee, ended up playing number 12, Mississippi State, beat them in overtime. And then Thursday, they had to play number 8, Texas A&M. And here they are tonight facing the number 5 team in the nation. That is baptism to the SEC for first-year head coach Kyra Elsey. And she is handle, handling it masterfully. There's a foul called on Ryan Howard. Yeah, what a gauntlet to go through, not only just to start conference play, but to start it with four ranked opponents. Chastity Patterson, coast to coast. The one thing that has not changed from Matthew Mitchell being the head coach at Kentucky to Kyra Elsie now leading the charge is the defensive intensity. That has been a must, a may stay. It has not changed. Bree Beal to the basket. Howard going baseline through two defenders. Henderson to Boston. They can score quick. Well, and especially with Destiny Henderson settling in. This is her team now, taking over for Ty Harris last year. Now, Destiny Henderson is that go-to point guard that pushes the tempo for South Carolina. She knows they thrive inside. All eight of South Carolina's points have come in the paint. Beal whistled for the foul. Now we're going to see Drayana Edwards come in off the bench for Kentucky. Such a talented player, but they do feel like she's trying to do too much right now. Just right away, she's called for an offensive foul on the screen. That's got to be frustrating because she, you know, has waited from not starting to now coming in wanting to make something good happen and gets called for a foul. Will that affect her the rest of this first quarter? Yeah, the coaches have challenged her as Jasmine Massengill is whistled for the foul. She's challenged Drayana Edwards to slow down and focus on the other aspects of her game. Don't worry about her shot not falling right now. But we have seen her when she gets settled in, she is a force to reckon with. She brings great energy on the court. She can do so many different things. Rebounding, she can score from the perimeter. She can do this right here, push in transition. Robin Benton back to Edwards. Howard off the screen. Floater. Robin Benton steps 
checks in, and Aaliyah Boston was just called for her second foul. But check out Ryan Howard in talking about a tough player to guard. She can do so many different things. Off the ball screen right here, over 6'5", Aaliyah Boston. Ryan Howard, is it Howard time? Uh, my Monday is pretty much set for tomorrow. T taking in the national championship game, Alabama and Ohio State. But Sunday, all about some women's basketball. We've got a great one here in Lexington for you. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck, a top 10 battle in the SEC. Howard back door. Beautiful. She's got seven. Now, one way to try to, to defend Ryan Howard's not let her catch it. Well, she's going to take advantage of that, cutting back door. Ryan Howard, the reigning ESPNW National Player of the Week, as Lily Grissett is called for the travel. She was just so crucial in the wins over Arkansas and Mississippi State. When you watch there, she just set up Lily Grissett. She pulled her out away from the basket and then cutting back door. And Leticia Ami here, just late on the rotation. Benton feeding Howard on the fadeaway. And gets the bounce. <laughs> Courtney, we talked to Kyra Elsie yesterday, and she said that in timeouts at times, Ryan Howard will ask or tell, Coach Elsie, where she wants the basketball. You think they've had that conversation? Because right now, everything for Kentucky is running through number 10, Ryan Howard. Yeah, that line of communication is open. Six straight points for Ryan Howard. They're getting her the basketball. Passing Gill almost loses it. The transfer from Tennessee. Six seconds on the shot clock. Robin Benton for three. It'll be South Carolina ball. What a player to inherit when you, I know Kyra Elsey was an assistant, but to take over as head coach and have someone so reliable as Ryan Howard on the floor. And you look, Kyra Elsey was at Tennessee when Ryan Howard was being recruited. So they took Jasmine Massingale at Tennessee, and then it was Kentucky who got Ryan Howard. Both those players are from the state of Tennessee, and now they're together in Kentucky. And those two along with Treasure Hunt, also from Chattanooga, or from Tennessee. Henderson shot bounces around. Edwards on the rebound. Quickly up ahead to Massengill. Stolen away. Leticia Me here was all alone in the paint. I tell you, that's part of the maturity Zaya Cook. Last year, she would have tried to force making something happen with the ball, but she got her head up and found a Me here. Sees her shot go through. She refers to herself as the big dog. If the big dog Edwards gets heated up, it could be trouble for South Carolina. Zaya Cook. Trying to feed Victoria Saxton. Kentucky's defense won't have it. A mismatch with Ryan Howard, Destiny Henderson, size-wise. Oh, they got to let him get switched up. Howard for two. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Wow. Remember, South Carolina has only had one practice in the last three days. Kentucky shooting 50% from the field in this first quarter. Rebound by Edwards. Spin by Zion Cook.
Nope, it's a travel. That's now five turnovers in South Carolina's last nine possessions. Well, this should be a great Big 12 SEC Tuesday college basketball doubleheader on ESPN and the app. Number eight, Wisconsin takes on number 10, undefeated Michigan at the Chrysler Center at 7 Eastern. Then we head to Rupp Arena for a battle between the top teams in the SEC. Second place, Kentucky. Post Alabama, who's won five straight. How about that? Kentucky surprising a lot of people. Their women's team, no surprise, though. They were expected to be a solid group this season. Edwards, she's feeling it. Hey, Drayana Edwards seems to have found that settled button. She's comfortable again on the court. Gamecocks can hold for the final shot. Destiny Henderson off the glass, going to the line. That ends a two-minute scoring drought. Destiny Henderson going right at Chastity Patterson. Leans in but gets the finish, the opportunity to go to the free throw line. She's going to have to get more involved in the offense. Three-point play for Destiny Henderson. Ryan Howard with the ball, just a few seconds left. The three from Howard, way off the mark. 0.7 seconds left in the quarter. Look at Kentucky coming out on the number five team in the nation, up by four right now after 10 minutes here in Lexington. Coming up, how Don Staley and South Carolina are using their platform to be the change. This season, South Carolina players and staff made individual decisions on whether to sit, kneel, or stand during the national anthem, all to bring awareness to the need for change. Dawn Staley cited Wednesday's attack on Capitol Hill as an example of why her team feels change is needed. This is the reason why. Because we, we live in, you know, there's, there's a America that's truly divided, and we don't like it. And that's what we're trying to bring awareness to. It's about being able to disagree and understand and support. You know, th th you can support without agreeing. And that's where we're trying to get people to understand um, about what's happening. And should we shut up and dribble? No, we should not shut up and dribble. This goes back to South Carolina's team theme for the season, what matters? And they've defined that as we're a group of individuals with opinions on what matters most to us. And that's what they used to make their decision on whether to sit, stand, or kneel during the national anthem. And that's the best part about being a team. A, a team, you're able to learn from each other and accepting and, export and supporting each other's decisions and understanding you're not all going to be alike, but respect each other. And Kyra Elsie for Kentucky has supported her players too. The team organized a unity march back in September, and they've continued to use their platform and their talents to elicit change. And this is artwork from Brian Howard that was from that unity march. And that unity march, Kyra Elsie encouraged her team to put this together and it was to bring awareness for police brutality the mental health conversations and the importance of voting and bringing in different voices so that they could hear and understand all points of view they brought in the chief of police even to visit with the team yeah, both have coaches have talked about how important it is to listen and learn from each other and that's the message that they're trying to get across by using their platform Destiny Henderson at the line for South Carolina. Olivia Owens called for the foul for Kentucky. South Carolina struggling in that first hat in that first quarter, turning the ball over, and Kentucky was just in a rhythm that couldn't be stopped. And a lot of that had to do with Aaliyah Boston on the bench in foul trouble. She has been kind of that spoke, that center part, nucleus of their offense, and she's had to go to the bench. 
Meanwhile, Ryan Howard has just lit it up 11 points for Howard already. This is Chastity Patterson. South Carolina will run. Henderson, nobody stopped her. What I love about Destiny Henderson's game is that change of speed. She can kick in the afterburners and run past everybody. Destiny Henderson has taken over the South Carolina program with Ty Harris, the point guard graduating. Blair Green knocks it down. The thing about Kentucky this year is it is Ryan Howard doesn't have to do everything. She's getting contributions from her supporting cast in a big way, and Blair Green's a big part of that. Now, so many times last season, Matthew Mitchell would just look to Ryan and say, hey, we've got to have you hit, take 20 shots a game, keep shooting the whole time. And this year, she has so many other weapons around her, and she's learned to adapt her game, but she can also knock it down. That game is just smooth. It's pure, like butter. Free Beal in trouble, loses it. Kentucky ball, Howard. And Olivia Owens blocked from behind by Lily Brissett. Zaya Cook gives it up to a me here. Banks it in. The stamina for South Carolina looks to be affected not having played in three days. You see them on defense. They're standing straight up, not down in a stance. South Carolina had to pause everything on Wednesday as a me here back to back buckets. Gamecocks trying to come back in Lexington. They're down two here in the second quarter. Ryan Howard already has 13 points in this game. And you see she's done it a number of different ways. There she starts the offense coming off a of ball screen, then cutting back door from the wing. She's a slicer and dicer. You give her room, she can operate and doing so very well so far. And her numbers have only gone up since they hit SEC play. And keep in mind, their first SEC games, the first three were against ranked opponents. We talked about having to uh, the anxiety of whether or not this game was going to be played. A player like Ryan Howard, after your last game that you played was a loss, you can't wait to get back on the court. So you know she was biting at the bit to play South Carolina today. Yeah, when we talked to Ryan Howard and Drayana Edwards yesterday and we asked them, you know, what do they got to fix after that t loss to Texas A&M on Thursday? They immediately responded, better communication, control the pace of the game, and don't give up after three quarters. Keep fighting because they did exactly that. They fought for three quarters against Texas A&M. They could have come in this game having knocked off three top 15 teams, but they let the one at Texas A&M get away. So they're, they're looking to try to avenge themselves today against South Carolina. We'll keep an eye on Jasmine Massengill who just left the game limping over to the Kentucky bench. South Carolina has trailed for almost nine minutes in this game. They came in having only trailed two minutes in their last four games. Kentucky ball. Zaya Cook yet to score for South Carolina. She's their leading scorer. She's 0 for 3 from the floor so far. And she's averaging 22 points over their last three games. Destiny Littleton just picked up her first foul for South Carolina. Back in the game for the first time, unavailable for the last two games for South Carolina.
Blair Green. There's a whistle underneath. It's Ryan on the set of South Carolina. Well, Ryan Howard just doing a little bit of everything. Crashing the offensive glass, trying to get the tip in, gets the foul called, and gets to the free throw, gets to the free throw line. Blair Green will take a seat. In comes Robin Benton with Ryan Howard at the free throw line. The national championship game presented by AT&T, Alabama, and Ohio State. Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. We have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, and digital. You get to see the Heisman Trophy winner, Devontae Smith. And, of course, Heisman finalist, Mac Jones. Alabama's just loaded. And they're an offensive scoring machine. Makes it fun to watch. Absolutely. Unless I'm you're all about team. some offense. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lily Grissett running the point. We'll stay with South Carolina. Gamecocks actually shooting better than Kentucky in this game. 48% from the field compared to 38% from the Wildcats. But the difference being South Carolina turning the ball over. Eight turnovers for the Gamecocks. And no Aaliyah Boston. She's on the bench with two fouls. Zaya Cook has yet to score. Edwards, an easy bucket. Hey, she's got six points and four rebounds. The comeback is on. Again, talking about South Carolina, had a three-day pause. They couldn't even work out with their strength and conditioning coach. i got to believe Kyra Elzey has got in her team's head and said, get up and down the floor, run in transition. Dangerous pass inside with the size of South Carolina. And it's overthrown. Target was a me here. They're having to rely on Leticia me here right now. Aaliyah Boston picked up those two fouls. Well, and you're trying to close the gap if you're South Carolina. And I made Dawn made the change, putting Destiny Henderson back in the game so that she has a true point guard running the offense. Robin Benton going to the line. It's on Anaya Russell, South Carolina's only freshman. Blair Green back in for the Cats. How much did Kyra Elsie light up? We were talking about Robin Benton. He was talking about showtime. Big shot. <laughs> yeah, she's a transfer from Auburn, has just come off the bench and gives him an extra spark. I asked Kyrie Elsie, I said, you did the scouting report when Robin was playing at Auburn. What was the scouting report? And she said, I had said to go under screens. And she said, Robin Benton is the only player that just burned me on that. Every time we went under the screen, <laughs> she lit Kentucky up. And Kyra has never forgotten. <laughs> Wildcat basketball. That is 10 turnovers now for South Carolina. Kentucky scored 11 points off of those. And this is what can happen after having to be off for three days, trying to get it all back all at once. South Carolina just needs to settle down and execute what has been working. Jasmine Patterson for two. Second chance for Henny. Benton off the screen, was looking to hit Edwards on the roll. Oh. 
Oh, man. <laughs> missed opportunities in transition. Missed layups. Nia Russell. Finally, one goes through thanks to Lily Grissett, the only senior Gamecock. And now can Kentucky hold on to this lead with Ryan Howard on the bench? Yes. Rayana Edwards says, I'll answer that question. Edwards with the two. Oh, and then she stepped out of bounds. It's going to be Gamecock ball. Uh, yeah, I don't know if her heel came down. Ooh. That was close. She was tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> you I mean, don't here know got caught tea. underneath. <laughs> caught under? <laughs> no, I don't. Caught underneath the basket. <laughs> you don't know Tiny Tim? From uh, through the tulips. Okay, I won't sing it. I only know from a Christmas Carol. Tiny Tim. <laughs> it wasn't confirmed until 5 o'clock yesterday that this game was even going to be played. South Carolina had a false positive within their program. They got the all clear about 24 hours before we tipped off. South Carolina had to practice last night, and then they got on a plane this morning to fly to Lexington. And Ia Russell from range. Kentucky's led by as many as seven. Oh. Howard dumps it off to Olivia Owens. We talked about last year, Matthew Mitchell wanting her to take 10, 20 shots a game. This year with the talent around her, Ryan has found her rhythm to know when she's got to score and when she can distribute. And Howard has also worked on her passing too because she doesn't have to take every shot. She has so many more weapons around her that she can look for her teammates. Last season, she accounted for 30% of Kentucky's points. This season, it's down to 20%. Well, when you have the addition uh, playing now, Chassie Patterson has become more involved offensively, and Dreonna Edwards. And she, the last three games, kind of been off her game, but she looks to be back on her game today, playing with that confidence. And then the size of an Olivia Owens down low inside really adds another component to the Wildcat offense. Usually when you see a percentage go down, it's a bad thing, but in this case, no, it just means Kentucky has more weapons out there. She can also still score. The thing about, notice this, last year, people used to say Ryan Howard doesn't have a left hand. She's coming off those ball screens with her left hand and deadly on that jumper. 17 points for Howard. Under a minute in the second quarter. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we'll have highlights and analysis around college basketball, plus a preview of number 11, Oregon, and number 7, Arizona, coming up at the half. Anaya Russell called for her second foul. This is Robin Benton at the line. but it's going to be a foul. Now, Olivia Owens colliding with Victoria Saxton. 
That's Owen's second foul. Kentucky has just come out here and looked more composed and put together, but remember they had a couple of days of practice before this one. And Aaliyah Boston has spent the majority of this first half on the bench in foul trouble. A huge loss for South Carolina. Boston, a 12 point per game, 10 rebound per game player on the bench. Meanwhile, Ryan Howard has 17 points. I'm gonna tell you, if I'm South Carolina, I'm sending a double team. Make somebody else handle the ball through the end of this quarter. Owens crashing the boards, they get it back. Howard turns around, puts it through! <laughs> in Lexington. It might always be Howard time in Lexington. Kentucky on top of South Carolina at the half, 41 to 32. Let's get you to Kelsey, Andy, and Rebecca in the studio. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Kentucky on top at halftime over South Carolina, 41 to 32 in Lexington. Look, sometimes it's just Ryan Howard time, Carolyn Peck, and she was going off in that first half. It is definitely Howard time in the first half. She started out and really she was dangerous coming off the ball screen, using her left hand, coming to the middle using her right hand again to the middle. No help from the South Carolina defense. And when help did come, it was too late. The post players were not able to really affect Ryan Howard coming off those ball screens. And she served up 19 points in that first half. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, Zaya Cook, their leading scorer, did not score. And Aaliyah Boston only played five minutes. She got in foul trouble. Both of these players averaged double figure points. Well, I've got to believe that having Aaliyah Boston back on the floor for South Carolina, she's going to require a lot of attention. If not, she's going to be able to score from the Kentucky defense. And if she does require that deep, that concentration from the Kentucky defense, that will open things up for Zaya Cook. As far as South Carolina's defense, what adjustments do you want to see on that ball screen that Ryan Howard is having so much success on? I think that you've got to ice it. You can't allow her to use the screen and send her to the baseline. You don't want to allow her to come to the middle. She has too many options that way. Kentucky playing its fourth top 15 team in the last 11 days. South Carolina had to take a three-day break due to COVID concerns, but got cleared last night at 5 p.m. to play this game. Got in a practice last night, got on a plane this morning. Kiki McKinney in and out. Zaya Cook, will she get her first points? Not there. Chastity Patterson with the huge deny. Had to believe that Zaya Cook was going to turn things up and push in transition, but look at Chastity Patterson go top shelf and get the block. I think Patterson's feeling good. She's only let Zaya Cook score two points. Has to give you a lot of confidence. The defense for Kentucky against South Carolina has been stellar. Except you just they've allowed South Carolina to get second chance points on the glass. If they can clean that up, Kentucky could have a good night. We're already seeing the difference in this Kentucky team as Howard pisses it off the glass because they have a post presence now. Last year against South Carolina, they struggled to keep up because Carolina could just get it inside. Now Kentucky's got some size. Having a true five in Olivia Owens is big for Kentucky. Chastity Patterson whistled for her second foul. South Carolina only one loss on the season. That was to a ranked NC State team. It's a kick ball. Thank you. 
South Carolina just looks a bit out of sync. Short, there's a foul on the floor. Bree Beal went up for the rebound for South Carolina. It's on Blair Green. You see Kyra Elsie saying, you got to push back. You definitely do if you're trying to rebound against Bree Beal. Cook on the move to Boston. Second chance will go for Aaliyah Boston. And as long as Aaliyah Boston can stay on the floor, that's going to be her impact. It may not be the initial shot, but that second chance opportunity she provides. Well, Olivia Owens, who's out there right now, has got to be careful, too, because she's got two fouls, just like Boston. you got to believe, well, you saw Drianna Edwards get off the bench. Is she coming in? for Olivia Owens, but now Aaliyah Boston has a size advantage. You look at that, a hell head taller Aaliyah Boston is. Adriana Edwards has looked better tonight for Kentucky, eight points, four rebounds, but that was most of the time when Aaliyah Boston was on the bench, only played five minutes in the first half. Henderson in the paint. McKinney. Oh, bobbles the handoff. I think they were going to hand it off to Blair Green, but Aaliyah Boston got in the way. And McKinney comes up her. They called the foul on McKinney. It's her third. Well, how about this? Aaliyah Boston just takes the ball away. Cross is over at the table right now, one of our officials for tonight's game. Or they can go and take a look if, to see if there was anything extra going on. Since McKinney did come up hurt. I just think that was going after the basketball. I didn't see anything excessive. Their arms got tangled, but there wasn't any kind of extra curricular <laughs> activity. Well, they're taking a look at this. Peggy McKinney has checked out of the game. Looks to be okay. Aaliyah Boston with the steal. She averages 2.5 steals a game. It's pretty important when that's coming from your center. Well, she leads them in total steals with 12. Has a couple already tonight. See if South Carolina can get things going here. Edwards guarding Boston. That's what she does. Carolina within three. They've trailed by as many as nine. Really felt that Aaliyah Boston's her presence was going to make a difference because she is such an offensive threat in the paint. Edward Short going to the free throw line. Do you see Aaliyah Boston posting up down low, and she has such great post patience. She checks and sees where there is no defense, and she keeps going with that drive around with that left hand to get the finish. Man, when she gets in a flow, it is so much fun to watch her. We saw her drop a career-high 28 points on Florida. Well, the SEC Network has Alabama covered tomorrow before the college football playoff championship game. Our pregame show starts at 8 a.m. and we take you up to kickoff. Then you can watch the game with the Alabama radio broadcast team and finally wrap up the day with SEC football final right here on the SEC Network.
Trey Justin Edwards Henderson hit. in the corner. And Leah Boston is posting up way out on the wing. And there's a whistle as Robin Benton got in on, on the action for Kentucky. It's on Victoria Saxton. So now Saxton and Boston have two fouls each on the floor for Kentucky. Excuse me, for South Carolina. In the first half, the initial pass at either the offense initially either started with Ryan Howard or the first pass went to Ryan Howard. In this third quarter, the Kentucky offense is starting away from Ryan Howard, and the offense is having trouble getting started. Howard's only taken one shot in this third quarter, too. And we talked to Kyra Elsie, and she said, you know, the times that Ryan Howard can be a little passive, and she talks to her all the time about starting, uh, staying aggressive. I believe it's got to come soon in this third quarter. The ball's got to go back into the hands of Ryan Howard. 19 points for Howard in that first half as Zaya Cook misses the first. The foul was called on Robin Benton. Howard at the bottom of your screen on that near side, moves over to the block. Boston was there to put something in her face off that screen, but it didn't matter. You gotta let Howard start your offense. Once you give her the basketball, then good things happen for the Wildcats. And just like that, nice kiss off the glass. Bree Beal called for her second, and here's Ryan Howard looking to complete the three-point play. Yeah. It's going to be a foul on Benton. Yeah, Ryan Howard has just been that go-to player since she became a Kentucky Wildcat. She was the SEC Freshman of the Year. And then the SEC Player of the Year last season averaged 23.4 points per game. That was second in the nation. And something that really surprises both you and I, Courtney, is Ryan Howard was not a McDonald's All-American. And then just turns out to be the national, like you said, National Player of the Year. Last season, the WBCA left her off the All-American list. You don't think she came into her junior season with some motivation? Absolutely she did. And we've talked about why her numbers are not as high as they were last season, but that's because she has help. She's still doing so many different things for this Kentucky team and can take over the game. Well, and she's more efficient. You look at what she's shooting, 48% from the floor. Nassim Gill hits. Henderson driving. Saxton on the putback. off the screen at the foul line. A couple in a row for the Tennessee transfer, Jasmine Massengill. And that's what Massengill did so well at Tennessee, just that steady clutch bucket. Boston had three defenders all around her. She'll go to the line on the other side. Jasmine Massengill a calm presence. She had to sit out the first eight games of the season, but she is bringing it for the Wildcats. Been a great addition added 
in this second semester. Not only do we have two outstanding coaches with outstanding teams, they're outstanding dressers. We're talking about Kyra Elzey and Dawn Staley. I mean, they're always looking fly on game day. I, I tell you, during this COVID season, they still are looking fresh on the yeah. sideline. <laughs> you look at Kyra Elzey on her fashion statement today and Dawn Staley wearing the WNBA hoodie. And you know with Dawn, everything is a statement. And for what the WNBA did this summer, that hoodie became symbolic of being a voice for change. So you're gonna see, uh, I've seen WNBA, I've seen NBA coaches, college coaches have come out wearing that WNBA hoodie. I know we were talking before the game. I keep forgetting to order one. If you can even find one right now, it's popular. Well, last time I, I tried to order one, I couldn't get one in my size. I'm gonna have to try again. South Carolina has been trying to make a comeback here most of the evening. Kentucky has led about 20 minutes of this game so far. tell South Carolina had not really done any basketball activities in the last three days, especially to start this game. Well, it throws you out of your rhythm, and not only offensively, but defensively as well, because that's a read, that's a feel. You get comfortable, but after three days, you get a little rusty. Props to Kentucky for still staying locked in, even though there was a question whether we would tip off tonight. turns it over and one of the things that South Carolina was able to do against Alabama was right in the middle of the floor throw the ball up in the air because of the height advantage you could see them doing that using that against Kentucky but you got to take care of the basketball especially against Chastity Patterson because she loves to swipe it and Edwards will finish Anderson drives and kicks. Zaya Cook, only three points tonight. Patterson wants it again. Jump ball, possession arrow is with the Wildcats. How about the hustle from Patterson? The defense that she has brought, and that's been an improvement from last season to this season. She said a lot of times she got frozen because she was thinking too much. Well, not this time. She has really picked up the defense, and a lot of times her steals are leading to offense in transition. South Carolina already has 15 turnovers. Their season high, 19. That's the Zaya Cook we're used to seeing. We've talked about how we're time. If South Carolina is going to get back in this game, close the difference, it's going to have to be a little cook time. Well, Zai Cook came into the game averaging over 22 points in their last three games. Just five points in Lexington. Almost turned it over and went out of bounds off of Howard. seen a difference in South Carolina in the second half? Well, I've seen Zaya Cook turn up her intensity a bit, being more aggressive-minded. I've got to believe Dawn Staley's going to call her number quite a bit down the stretch. They give the ball to her. Up around Ryan Howard. Put back, won't go. South Carolina has struggled to make some easy layups. Don Staley actually had them watch every missed layup on Wednesday. Well, and especially their post players. It's, you've got to focus all the way through to the finish. Boston for three. Love it. No big deal. 
Now the biggest difference between South Carolina last year and this year, you had you some Mad Kiki, Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Who is it going to be for South Carolina this year? When you're in a tight game like this, Kentucky in control, who is going to step up? Seven seconds for Howard. Henderson moving fast. Get buckets fast. And Kentucky calls a timeout. Brian Howard's got 26 points for Kentucky. But South Carolina coming back just down by three to the Kentucky Wildcats. Ryan Howard, 26 points, four rebounds. South Carolina on a 7-2 run, trying to catch up to Kentucky. It's a game they've been playing almost all night. And Aaliyah Boston, she just hit a three. I've got to believe that South Carolina, they're going to spread the, the offense out. Aaliyah Boston playing a high-low. You've got Leticia Ami here down low. And when you go high-low, that leaves driving lanes opportunities for South Carolina. Destiny Henderson is leading the Gamecocks right now with 14 points. Henderson coming off, having 20 points a couple times over her last three games. Her scoring is really amped up. I believe Kentucky's got to play through Ryan Howard and Dreonna Edwards. They've been the two hot hands, the two in double figures for the Wildcats tonight. Robin Benton is blocked by Boston, and she's taken it the length of the court. Score it, Aaliyah Boston. I don't need no point guard. That's 6-5 for you right there, coast to coast. Carolina trying to take the lead. Ami here. Back up and in. Gamecocks on top for the first time since it was 8 to 7. And Howard loses it. Possession arrow with Kentucky. But what was the adjustment? Bree Bill iced the screen, did not allow Ryan Howard to drive middle off that ball screen. Oh, sorry, the possession arrow was pointing towards South Carolina, so it will be Gamecock ball. Robin Benton's gonna have to try to slow down. Destiny Henderson, she get ahead of speed. She could get that shot off. Does not get it off on time, but South Carolina ends the third quarter, scoring nine straight points. Gamecocks have the lead. South Carolina has taken the lead going into this fourth quarter. You might not have Mad Kiki, but you've got Boston the Beast. Aaliyah Boston has turned things up in the third quarter. She got it done inside, outside, and hey, check this out. Coast to coast, you don't want to stop the big girl. She's going to make you pay, and she turned it up for the Gamecocks. Boston getting after it. She was in foul trouble in the first half, but in the third quarter, 10 points, four of seven shooting. By the way, she also had six rebounds, two steals, and a block in that third quarter. Well, South Carolina owned the glass in the third quarter, out rebounding Kentucky 15 to three. What a difference it makes to have Aaliyah Boston on the floor for South Carolina. Kentucky has led, was leading for 24 plus minutes in this game. Brian Howard, though, has got something to say about that. Uh, we're in for a good fourth quarter. When you've got All-American 
Ryan Howard and Aaliyah Boston for South Carolina going at it for their team. Both of those players, including Zaya Cook, who just took that shot on the wooden midseason top 25 list. Kentucky led by as many as nine. South Carolina's largest lead has been just three points. Watch Bree Beal guard Ryan Howard. Will she allow her to come off those ball screens? Beal, one of the best defenders on South Carolina's roster. That's why she got a starting spot as a freshman. Kentucky can't hold on to the basketball. And they ran out of time. Seven seconds. And that foul's gonna be on Owens. That'll be her third. The expansion of Aaliyah Boston's game from just scoring on the block, shooting the three, now her agility off the bounce and her balance, body control, it's been fantastic. Well, she told us during the shutdown when everything was locked down, she went home to St. Thomas and spent a lot of time in the gym working on her range, working on her game, and that's only added to her confidence. The other aspect of Aaliyah Boston's game, you know what she does? She works out with the guards, with Coach Jolette Law, with her ball handling. That's why she can take it the length of the floor and score. Henderson can run and score in transition, too. Destiny Henderson with 16 points. Go. Don Staley had said she wished her team weren't so nice. I, I see a little grit coming from the Gamecocks right now. Edwards travel. South Carolina on a huge run right now, a 50 to two run. What's changed? Well, it's the offense of Kentucky not running through Ryan Howard. I mean, the first half, every offense, it seemed, it went through number 10 in white. And right now, other people are starting the offense. Ryan Howard has to take over. Howard had 19 points in the first half. Just nine here in the second. And Henderson is just making a statement that she can continue to score. Bucket after bucket. Kentucky's got to talk about it. Just over seven minutes to go, and they find themselves down now to number five, South Carolina. South Carolina on a 17-2 run. A lot of that has to do with Destiny Henderson. Destiny Henderson has taken the reins. She has the keys to this truck of the South Carolina Gamecocks. She has been aggressive. She has turned up her intensity, and you can see the difference in this second half. She had 20 points in their last game, already has 18 points today. Her and Aaliyah Boston have really changed this game in the second half for South Carolina. They have brought an attitude. It's not just been their production, it's been their attitude that they have brought to the floor that started in the third quarter. And that's something the South Carolina team has been trying to find, finding that identity after losing two big seniors who led this program for so many years. Now, who is this next team? And we're starting to see them find that. Oh yeah, Ryan Howard has 30 points. <laughs> I was gonna say, this, as long as Ryan Howard is on that other team, this thing ain't over. Kentucky ball. 
Robin Benton did not get the foul call. Here goes Henny. Buckets. She's got tricks. Driving to the basket. She's got tricks. Passing Gill will slow it down. Kentucky trailing by seven. They've led by as many as nine. Foul on Bree Beal. Her third. Bree Beal just has such a tough assignment. I mean, the best way to try to defend Ryan Howard is to not let her catch it, but she's so sad that you deny she's going to take you back door. Victoria Saxton back in for the Gamecocks. Chastity Patterson returns for Kentucky. And Kentucky has taken Ryan Howard out of the game. Six minutes to go, down by seven. That's Tatiana Wyatt in trouble. Five seconds. <laughs> South Carolina will take over. Ryan Howard on the bench right now for Kentucky. 30 points for fifth career 30-point game. You've got... They're two leading scorers in this game, Ryan Howard and Drianna Edwards, both on the bench, down seven. That's what South Carolina did against Alabama, just throwing over the top. When you look at the vertical leap that Victoria Saxon has, she's got vertical at that's tw uh, 29 inches. She can touch 10-5, 10-5, that's wow. good enough. Hey, Ryan Howard has checked back into the game for Kentucky with Victoria Saxton at the free throw line. Well, this should be a great Big 12 SEC Tuesday college basketball doubleheader on ESPN and the app. Number eight, Wisconsin takes on number 10, Michigan at seven. Then we head to Rupp Arena for the battle between top teams in the SEC, Kentucky and Alabama. That's coming up on Tuesday. Elite Reset just whistled for her second foul. South Carolina trailed at the half. They've trailed, they had trailed most of this game before a surge in that third quarter. Now they're up seven. An 18-game SEC win streak is on the line for the Gamecocks including 14 on the road. Swatted away by Boston. What'd you say, Boston the Beast? Boston the Beast. But first, it was Brie Beal, now Lily Grissett, really making it tough on Ryan Howard coming off the ball screen, but once she does, Boston is there for the help. Kentucky ball. If you're the Wildcats, what was one of the things Ryan Howard told us that they learned from the A&M game? They have got to play for four quarters. They can't stop fighting. Got to finish the deal. And now Ryan Howard, ball screen. Okay, South Carolina has made their adjustment. Now let Ryan Howard bring her off screens. Give her a stagger, let her catch and shoot. She's deadly there. Kentucky has missed its last four shots. Benton. Destiny Henderson has had so much success tonight driving in the paint. Well, the other thing that Kentucky has got to do, you got to stop the ball. And Chassie Patterson trying to run with Destiny Henderson. She is so quick and so crafty getting to the rim that she's going to get the layup or she's going to get herself right where she is, and that's at the free throw line. South Carolina has now shot 16 free throws, but they're only hitting 63%. They struggle at the free throw line this season. Benton. 
can't get around Boston, rejected for the second time in a row. Bitten gets the steal, but then coming at Boston at the other end, gets the block. And then I think Aaliyah Boston gave her a little linger look after that. She's getting a little <laughs> bit of that mad kicky attitude about her. South Carolina should be pumped about that. You got to make a little toot on the court. Well, Aaliyah Boston needs it because Don Staley told her that one day in practice she was talking about Aaliyah settling for jump shots. She called her jump shot Judy. Aaliyah didn't say anything till after practice, and then he came over and was like, Coach, I heard that. <laughs> Don's like, no, I wanted her to get a little mad about it, but she didn't. She just kind of laughed. Kentucky's just settled for the three ball, and it hasn't gone in. Patterson off the window. <laughs> South Carolina's going to take a timeout. What a game we have in Lexington, Carolina on top. Time ticking away here in Lexington. Kentucky led most of this game, but now it's South Carolina on top. Drayana Edwards back in the game for the Wildcats. Four seconds is a travel on Aaliyah Boston. How can Edwards help Kentucky right now? Well, what Edwards can do, because she's going to be guarded by Aaliyah Boston, is pulling Boston away from the basket. That will leave driving lanes or pull that shot blocker away. Patterson corner pocket. Saxton got cut under the basket. Power time. Or Patterson time. CP. Howard Boone. Patterson had the hot hand, went right back to her. How about eight straight for Kentucky, eight straight for Chastity Patterson. And there's a rebound. Cats down by one. Been big for Ryan Howard. Instead, they give up an easy bucket for Lily Grissett. They put the ball in Chastity Patterson's hands. 140 to go. Howard gets her own rebound. Free throws on the way. And the foul is on Boston. Howard on the backside, getting the rebound. Boston was going for it. She's got five blocks in this half. Remember, only played five minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. So Leah Boston got to rest in the first half. Ryan Howard has had to carry the mail for the majority of this game. But she's used to that. They've asked her to do that the last several games for Kentucky. That's kind of her role. Yeah, that's like exactly where she likes to play. She likes to be in the thick of things and make things happen. Well, the national championship game presented by AT&T, Alabama and Ohio State, Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. We'll have you covered from every platform, TV, radio, and, of course, digital. Big free throws. One-point game. 
Alexa now with the mismatch. Brianna Edwards guarding Aaliyah Boston. Boston attacking the rim to get her own rebound. Love it. Big girl doesn't give up on the play. I might miss the first one, but I'm going after that rebound. Aaliyah Boston now with 20 points. And a double-double for Boston. And another block. South Carolina trailed by nine at the half. Aaliyah Boston on the bench most of that first half. They have flipped the switch here in the second half against a top 10 team. And Zaya Cook is fouled by Edwards. And this is going to be crucial for South Carolina. They've got to be able to knock down free throws, only shooting 60% from the free throw line on the season. 65% today. If you're Kentucky, you're giving it to Ryan Howard after this free throw? All day long. Kentucky will take a timeout. They can advance the basketball with 24.9 seconds to go. But that is the last timeout for Kentucky. And so now Kentucky with 24 seconds. If they, they can go for the three to tie it. And they want to use as much clock as possible so that if they are able to tie it up, then South Carolina would not have time to score to win the game. Kentucky led by as many as nine points in this game. South Carolina led by as many as nine here in the fourth quarter. But then you had Chastity Patterson knocking down a three. These two right there helped to close the gap. But then it was Aaliyah Boston following her shot up. We've had a great, especially in this second half, in this fourth quarter, this back and forth has been so much fun. South Carolina trying to extend an 18-game SEC winning streak. They have won their last 14 SEC road games. Now I have seen Ryan Howard off the ball screen, hit the three, off the pin down, turn around, hit the three. She can score it in so many different ways. Is it Howard time tonight? Kentucky had no choice but to foul. 10.3 seconds to go. It does get interesting because South Carolina, not a great free throw shooting team, especially tonight, just 58% from the charity stripe. But normally, Zaya Cook is an 81% free throw shooter. She just missed her last two. Now she's one for four from the foul line. And Kentucky does not have any more timeouts. And South Carolina came out of the locker room at halftime, and it helps to get Aaliyah Boston back on the floor. Well, between Aaliyah Boston and her presence on the court, and Destiny Henderson became even more aggressive in that second half, and it paid dividends for the Gamecocks. Even more impressive is that South Carolina only had one practice over the last three days. They were shut down due to COVID concerns, got the all clear to play last night at 5 p.m. They practiced last night. 
got on a plane this morning to come play this game against the number 10 team in the nation. And Don Staley never hesitated, never even thought about once she knew that her team could play, not to ask for a postponement for lack of preparation, but to have her team step to the challenge. Kentucky will have 10.3 seconds to work with, but they've got a lot of work to do. I think everybody knows they're probably looking for Ryan Howard. McKinney's three attempt is blocked, and Boston can just hold it. South Carolina trailed for 25 minutes tonight, but the number five Gamecocks are victorious. Their 18th, excuse me, their 19th straight SEC win. South Carolina did a nice job of turning up the intensity. They own the boards. They own the paint in the second half. Aaliyah Boston with a double-double as South Carolina gets it done on the road. Not done from Lexington just yet. Gamecocks defeat Kentucky 75-70. Carolina comes from behind and beats number 10 Kentucky 75 to 70 on the road. Their 19th straight SEC win. Things totally changed Carolyn in that third quarter when Aaliyah Boston went back out on the floor. Well, I knew that her presence was going to be a factor just because of the size and the attention, but it was her effort and the things that she did that made the biggest difference. And Aaliyah is joining us now, a fourth double-double of the season for Miss Aaliyah Boston, 20 points, 12 rebounds. What was that attitude you came out in the third quarter with? We saw a difference in you. I mean, yeah, I feel like in the first half we weren't really playing to the best that we could, and part of that was I also got into foul trouble really early, so I definitely need to be more aware of that. But third quarter we knew that we just had to, we just had to bring it. We had to play how we knew how to play. We had to pick up the intensity because Kentucky's a great team, and we knew that they weren't just going to back down. I was ex I would, I'm so impressed, Aaliyah, with you, the expansion of your game this season. Can you just talk about how you're not just a low post center anymore? You have shown that you can shoot the three, even bringing it in transition. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely been trying to work on expanding my game so that I can help us in that way because I know that teams bring doubles and triples, so if I'm spaced out, they can't really do that. And I thought, too, Aaliyah, did I see a little mad Kiki coming out in you in this second half? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Aaliyah, what's it been like, too, to see Destiny Henderson? She had 22 points tonight to really start to take over this team as the point guard. I mean, Henny is doing a great job. She pushed the ball in transition, and we work on that so much in practice. And so, she, they, I mean, no one has really been able to stop her going in transition, and I think she's <laughs> yeah. just doing a great job. What was it like for this team to get ready after finding out 24 hours before tip-off that you were actually going to play a basketball game today? I mean, we were excited because we didn't know what was going to happen, and then we had one day to prepare. But, I mean, Coach even told us this is this not an excuse. We know how to play. It's just basketball, and so we just have to bring that intensity that we bring every day in practice. Hey, you got the win, too, over a top-10 team. Aaliyah yes. Boston, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. A double-double for Aaliyah Boston, her fourth of the season. What a turnaround for South Carolina. Some great in-game adjustments to get the job done when they were down at half. Well, and I think that shaking off the rust, too, again, like you talked about, not having played in three games in three days and then being able to, in the second half, make the adjustment and especially defending Ryan Howard off those ball screens, I thought that made a big difference in the second half. Now, you see Ryan Howard had 32 points, but she was really limited in that second half. And for some reason, Kentucky kind of went away for her, from her for a little while. What South they Carolina didn't. comes into Lexington and gets a top 10 victory. The Gamecocks improving to 8-1 and one on the season. They are 3-0 and oh to start SEC play for the third straight year.